So a lot of people will tell you that um, you can't judge art or beauty's in the eye of the beholder or some other trite piece of nonsense. But when you actually try to look at a wide variety of art, you're going to find that <laughs> there are some consistencies in what people think beautiful. Um, so beauty is not necessarily in the eye of the beholder. It can be evolutionary. It can be um, something that's a collective unconscious. But I, I also think that if you look at enough art, you will find stuff that you hate and that will undermine this whole goody two-shoes idea of like, oh, art is precious and wonderful and you can't judge it. I would encourage you to judge it. You can't know what you like until you know what you hate. And I don't mean that to say that you should be mean about it, but I do think you should feel free to dislike something, even if it's famous, even if you think you're supposed to like it. I think it's even better if you're supposed to like it and you have a reason to not like it. Um, so let's take a moment to talk about how to make good art. Um, really, I, I put good in there because, um, you know, I, I thought that was a fun way to put it. But really, what I mean is effective. What is working well? Right. So things to think about here, how intention influences choices of media and symbolism. They'll actually ask you to do this in the IB program anyway. How research about other artists can impact aesthetics. Artists base their work on other artists all the time. That's normal. You cannot be completely original. There's no such thing. Um, and think about how experimentation and unintended results can lead to more mature work. People who are really deep into their art tend to take risks and um, think about what the next thing could be. They're not necessarily stuck in this idea of, you know, it has to be just like this because I figured out this process and I can't move from this point. That's, that's just not something that professional artists tend to do. Um, so how do we decide if something is good or bad or maybe a better way to put that is effective or ineffective? Does it effectively communicate ideas or meaning? Um, there is a place in this world for art that's just pretty to look at, but this is not that place. We need to think about art that has a greater impact. Um, is this made with the skill of a professional who understands their craft? It doesn't necessarily mean it's pretty. That means they understand how their materials work, how it's seen by the viewer, they're really in touch with their medium. Does it challenge viewers to think in a new way? Good art usually does. Um, does it use media to help convey meaning? I mean, if you're trying to make a work of art about how drab and dark and dreary everything is, maybe bright, transparent watercolors are not the way to go. You, you have to think about how your material reflects your ideas. Is it boring? This is, to me, the worst possible sin, is boring art. Better to have something poorly made and shocking than to have something boring. People can forgive shocking. They cannot forgive boring. In fact, they won't even consider your art. In a gallery situation, they did a study and found out that people consider a work of art for three seconds on average. That means most of those works are getting less than three seconds of the viewer's engagement. So you have to stand out. If you're boring, you're going to be one of those less than three seconds. Does it have something to say about art philosophy or the nature of the art object? That's usually a big sell. If you understand art enough to reflect on its process, that goes so far. So let's take a look at these two. Um, on the left, we have something that's poorly constructed. On the right, we have something that is not technically realistic, but it seems to have all of these forms and pieces and shapes and colors that have unity with each other. It is wacky. It's weird, but it seems like it's weird with a purpose. On the left, we have something that's looking directly at us. The figure is so symmetrical in, in its placement that it's not interesting at all. Um, it's asymmetrical in the wrong way. So we've got the right eye way above the left. Um, whatever those ears are doing, they, they need to not do that. Um, 
You can have weird shapes, but they need to feed the meaning of the work. And I can't figure out a meaning to the one on the left. Whereas on the right, what I see is a man that thinks too much of himself. He has a useless ring. He's holding up this glass of champagne like, like he's a big deal. And I think it's mocking that um, that sense of entitlement, right? So I'm getting a whole narrative out of the one on the right. I don't get that from the left. Um, here, we have two landscapes. Neither one is realistic, but I think you can tell which one is more purposeful. They're using their colors in a way that seem to relate to each other, that seems to be purposeful. On the left, all I see is flat stuff just kind of shoved on there. Um, and please be careful if you make landscapes with hills that they not end up looking like body parts. Um, in this case, I call it the butt crack hills. Um, but even worse, there's a tree running right up the crack. So you have to be careful with that sort of thing because from a distance, people may not read hills and, and trees. They may read something else. Um, be careful of that sort of thing. Um, here we have two vehicles essentially. Um, one's kind of a train and the other's, I don't know, like a like a futuristic train semi truck thing. Um, one is, you know, supposed to look like a saw uh, blade and the other doesn't. Um, here it's in the details and the fact that you get that writing out of there. If you have to label your work inside the work, you probably are not doing a good job of telling your story with images. I, I can make exceptions every now and then, but for the most part, if you're putting words in your work, it's a sign that you've already accepted failure as a visual artist. Okay, so you have to be really careful with that. Um, here, similar compositions, the one on the right, feels interesting. How? Why is there this feather here? Why are some of the clouds cubes? I, I want to really look at it and understand its shapes and, and subtleties in its value changes. We're on the left, I like weird, but this is weird without purpose. I, I don't get it. I don't get what they were trying to do. And it just kind of frustrates me. So what are some things you can avoid? Well, First of all, for the love of all this holy, don't be boring. This is a painting done very well. Um, Hitler was very proud of it. Um, this is actually one of his works, but he was rejected because his work was so boring and overly traditional. Um, just because you think it might be pretty does not mean it's gonna be well received. Too esoteric. Um, most people don't get into Kandinsky because his work is so weird and it actually takes a lot of research and understanding of art history to really get what's going on here and uh i i personally have grown to like some of his work, but it's taken me a long time to get there um i i think kandinsky is too um too academic for most people Poor form it you can have something that's drawn badly if the theme of the work is bad drawing, if you're trying to do something that is um, that's going to be helped meaning wise by a lack of form and attention to detail, then this might work. But right now, it I, I can't understand for the life of me why there's a Band-Aid looking thing on the dog's mouth why the other one looks like it's the sad product of a chimp and a dog. I don't get it and I really don't like it. Being out of touch. This, this work is fine if you're just making something to hand to a friend. That's fine. If you use it as a decoration on a card to your mom, fine. As a work of fine art, it's just out of touch. No one makes anything like this because it doesn't convey anything it it just sits there and i don't know seems like it's laughing at us i don't know what's going on there um but you have to get a sense of what's being done in art and why to understand why this would not go over well straight up theft is bad okay you can be similar to someone's work 
without straight up stealing it. This is straight up stealing Frida Kahlo. This is putting your face in her picture. Don't do that. Um, now, what you could do is do work inspired by her, where you have the same kind of iconography, but you do it your own way. Add your own flair to it. Don't straight up steal somebody's stuff. Poor curation. Like, we're going to have to talk about matting and framing and all of that stuff later on. But take good care of your work. Don't let it get folded or wrinkled or anything like that. Keep it away from little brothers and sisters and all that. Um, and don't keep liquids near your art. That is a guaranteed way for something to spill and ruin a bunch of work that you've done. So here are some five basic components for making effective art. One is concept, the idea that guides all other components and decisions, and it can change while you're working. That's okay, but you want to start with something. Inspiration, that means references or acknowledging artists, periods, techniques, or movements that hold up this work. So if I want to make something that has crazy colors in it, I want to look up artists that have used crazy colors. Like I might look up the Fauves of the early 1900s. Um, you might be saying to yourself, well, gee, golly, gosh, I don't really know that much about art history. How am I going to do that? Well, that's what I'm here for. So if you say to me, I want to use some crazy colors and you recommend some artists, I can do that for you. Communication, the ease with which the concept or meaning is delivered to the viewer. So don't be obvious about your meaning, but don't make it so hard to understand that you need to put a three page paper next to it for people to get it. There needs to be an in between there. Originality, that means you adapt ideas. You don't have to be unique. No one has to be unique, okay? Um, get that out of your head now because there is no way that you could achieve that goal, even if you're a professional artist. Um, and think about your process, your skills, your techniques used in the best manner that you can. Again, you are in high school. I am not expecting grad level work or whatever. Um, I will give you whatever help I can, but, you know, be good to yourself. You really don't need to be that awesome. So the blank canvas or the blank piece of paper is your biggest enemy because it is full of possibility and it will stare back at you and, and make you feel bad about yourself because you're going to ruin it. You just know you're going to ruin it. I would recommend um, sometimes just getting down to drawing, don't erase anything and just have fun with it and then go back and erase anything you decide you didn't like later. Um, because there is no perfect. You will not achieve that goal, no one does. So consider social political issues, styles and methods, personal experiences and manipulation of materials and create an experience for the viewer.